Good evening. Welcome to the Thursday, May 20th planning board meeting. I'd like to everyone to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Introduction of uh, board members. To my left, we have Jerry Graybill, and I, Michael Lulu, and acting chair. I have Allison Hurley to my right, and Paul Amatucci. All right, and now um, we have a public comment section. So this is open up to any residents of the town of Berwick. I got no one. Okay. Yeah. All right. So moving forward, we're going to have a public hearing for conditional use amendment and site plan review adult use marijuana production facility 569 Portland Street, Easy Going LLC. I don't believe anyone's here for the for the public hearing. No one, there's no letters received, no abundant feedback. Okay. And you guys are here for that, so I guess we'll close the public hearing. Um, another public comment? No, we're, we're going to go to approval of minutes for May 6, 2021. I make a motion to approve the minutes. I second it. Okay. Um, all in favor? Aye. There we go. Old business, conditional use amendment and site plan review, adult use marijuana production facility, 569 Portland Street, easy going LLC. So let James take it away from there. So you had a sit walk earlier today. Um, and we saw the, where the pad um, was previously going to be poured. Uh, they are going to move the building back 25 feet uh, per our fire chief. Um, we didn't have, so I don't think we had much that we were waiting for uh, from the last meeting. There's no materials we requested. I added a couple of conditions of approval based on the conversation we had. The manufacturing lab shall be inspected by the first fire chief and a third party. And I, I put in parentheses that third party should be the Office of Marijuana Policy or, or be a third party engineer, but it should be inspected um, before it's in operation. I understand the Office of Marijuana Policy does do uh, periodic inspections. My assumption is they'll do an inspection before they're operational, but just to be sure. And then number three, would preventive maintenance shall be documented annually um, in a few. The applicant wants more clarity on that. We just want annually to make sure that the preventive maintenance is being done, that the extraction lab, cutane, we want to make sure that things are being changed out appropriately, and we want a log of that annually to be sent each calendar year. Other than that, that's 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 all I have. Um, I have the, the findings in front of you today. Um, we have the applicant and their consultant, Evan, is on. If you have any further questions, other than that, yeah, it's back back to you guys. Okay, so we're gonna be voting on completeness. Uh, we're just. This would be. Um, they could be the application could be approved tonight. Um, okay. You could look at the, approving the findings and improving the conditions and improving the application. Okay, so we're going to look for approval of the findings of fact and then approve the application, right? Okay. So findings, I'm... conditions, yeah, okay. there's three. Yeah. yeah, findings, conditions, and then approval. All right, so I move to approve findings of fact. I second. All right, uh, all in favor? Okay. And now it's the conditions of approval. I think I'll say move it to 25 feet the metric conditions, right? Yeah. So yep. all right. I make a motion to approve the conditions. 
that need second. Yeah. Okay. okay. And uh, all in favor? Okay. okay. And now application um, approvals. Make a motion to approve. <laughs> the application is complete. I'll second. Okay. All in favor? And there we go. Okay. Jen, the applicants, they had a question on, um, I think, the, found, the, the foundation on whether it needs to be inspected. What was it? What was the question? If it had to be inspected before? before. before yeah. Do yeah. so they before need the a board. foundation inspection? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Awesome. Thank you, John. Is that by, by you, Jen? Yes, that will be by me. Yep. Thank you. Brian, did you have, did you have a question? Yeah, I was just wondering if we need to have the pad inspected before we lay it or after we lay it. Also, does it matter if we use fiber or rebar? It really depends on what you have on your plan. Um, I'll inspect it before pre-pour to make sure the poly is in place in the rebar, or if you're using fiber mesh, um, it's known what you're using in this lab. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, next for old business is preliminary plan, major subdivision, half layer lane and Norman Court, Navina Acres, LLC. Uh, Navina Acres, the 54 lot subdivision proposed by Navina Acres LLC, located on Norman Court and Hopkins Lane. It's mostly in the R2 zone. 40, 46.3 of 61.8 acres is proposed to be developed. Construction is proposed to begin fall of 2021 and completion of the subdivision by fall of 2023. Um, of the 60.4 acres, approximately 8.7 acres are wetlands. 1.14 acres of wetlands will be impacted by the project and will require. And I'm not messing with you. Requires a tier three NRPA permit. A crossing of Coffin Brook will be replaced with an arch culvert. The proposed stormwater BMPs include four wet ponds, five grass underdrained filters. Two level spreaders, multi-layer lots will be treated by a roof line, drip edge filters, and forest and buffers. Just wanted to read this for the record. I don't think we're going to be taking over any any stormwater infrastructure, but if we were, uh, three percent of the infrastructure infrastructure costs are due. Um, but otherwise, one percent of the infrastructure costs will be borne by the applicant, and that's because. Become responsible for making sure that the stormwater infrastructure uh, continues operating. But it looks like there was a, a map that showed there was a likelihood of historical and archaeological resources in the area. So I was wondering if there's a survey that will be done or if there's anything on that. I didn't see it. Uh, and then just a, a note on clarity for ownership. What's being proposed is the, the roads and the sidewalks will be taken over by the town. The cul-de-sacs will remain private. Stormwater infrastructure, stormwater infrastructure, open space will be a homeowners association. The applicant requested a, a temporary waiver um, in order to provide the analysis for final plan. Um, that way they just wanted to make sure that their lot size wouldn't change significantly, so their traffic study would be more accurate. Uh, just to point out, the Old Pine Hill and School Street intersection has been a high crash location for 30 years on and off. And I think there's some improvements um, opportunities. I think they could be, it could be uh, a good win-win to, to get that taken care of. Um, if we have tonight, they, they would have to submit their traffic plan for final approval. Several restrictive covenants are proposed to be placed in the deeds, including minimum minimum building size. Uh, there's a restriction on mobile homes, restrictions on accessory buildings, signs, vehicle storage, animals, tree clearing, and there's required site maintenance. Uh, we had Southern Maine Planning Development Commission review this, and these are his comments based on the soil information. Uh, Mr. Feldman would offer the following comments. 
the soils, as we know, are not great on the parcel. He recommends that the town hires a, a, a third party at the applicant's expense to provide on-site inspections during construction in order to make sure materials are placed and the roadway and compaction rates are being met to slow uh, future deterioration of the roads through frost heaving. As well, the third party engineer should also inspect all road control to make sure this, this, uh, all measures are put into place correctly and fixed at their restored period during construction. And the inspector should document all of his visits and provide the town documentation of the work weekly work. Um, see Article 10 of subject regulations for other guidance. The applicant also provided a maintenance log that the DEP will acquire for ongoing maintenance <laughs> in the stormwater ponds and outlets. BJ says he would require that the developer or the homeowners association provide a copy of the logs going forward for the town's file on these projects. That's something that will require, and that's kind of part of the reason why we have that 1% fee. And we may want the homeowners association to enter into this agreement with the town. All the coverage in this project should be designated to be habitat friendly. All stormwater buffers should require to be set in the field, indicating that those areas are no cut buffers so that the homeowners understand they cannot clear them if wooded in order to make a yard. And if, and if open space should not be mowed or left unmaintained. Another miscellaneous. Prior to approval, I would require the homeowners documents to be submitted for review and require a bond for the, the cost of construction under Article 13, performance guarantees of the subsidy regulations. So um, I'm sure you have questions. So at this point, um, I, I don't know if uh, there's a couple of new board members, a few new board members. I didn't know if we wanted to do another site walk for the new, new members. Uh, just to check out the site again. I think this will be the fourth site walk during this process. Um, other than that, uh, what's up for tonight is application completeness. And at that point, if the application is found complete, then a uh, public hearing would be scheduled. All right, I guess my only question is for the open space. I mean, there's so much of it. We're making it's such a big development going into Berwick. Is that going to be accessible to anyone outside of these homeowners associations, like town residents? I don't, that has not, we have not addressed that at this oh. point. Right. Typically, this is mixed into this development, mm -hmm. and it would not necessarily be open for public recreation. I believe. <laughs> On one of our previous meetings, we had a discussion of this, and somebody, one of the boards or one of the town members, was questioning why that would become public because there was public stuff here in town now. Mm -hmm. So, well, I think that's up for discussion. Do you have a kind of a presentation you wanted to? Do? I don't think I need to, unless people have, you know, there's a lot to this. Okay, it's like you said, a 54 lot subdivision with 6,000 feet of road. It will be serviced by public water, public sewer. There'll be a pump station going in. Uh, like you said, there is, I have to take a stab at it, but approximately 4,500 feet of road will be taken over by the town. It'll be about another 1,500 feet that would be private. Uh, Essentially, that's it. We've talked about the amount of wetlands we're impacting. We are driving that down. We're tinkering with the development of lot lines, trying to keep ourselves out of the wetlands. We've been able to reduce that number, I think, by about probably 20% at this point. We've got a couple of other things to look at, trying to get down a little bit more. Um, I know you have a letter from a lot of questions right away. I brought in a letter tonight from Les Boswell's attorney just repeating that i do not believe that that is a planning board item you have a boundary survey you have what you need from us and that becomes really a civil matter to move forward using this something other than that unless people have questions on the plan um 
I have a question is the sidewalks, are they going to be on both sides or on all of it or just a limited? The, the intent would be on one side. On one side. The okay. existing road that's up there now coming into the circle yeah. is all prepped. Right, on right. The left hand side. And it's going to stay, it's going to continue that way. Yeah. Okay. And then there will be, it doesn't show on our plans now, but there will be a sidewalk going up Pine Hill Road to the library. Okay. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Yep. They're going to update that. And yes. James, I heard you say something about like archaeological history. Yeah, let, me, let me take let me take a look at that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let me take because anything we've seen in the field out there really isn't any representation of any archaeological things. Okay, mm -hmm. pretty much appears to be farmland and really didn't have any building development on it. Oh. Uh, that is to be <laughs> What, no, what, will it, happen, what will happen with this now and as soon as we see that you people are reasonably satisfied with the plans, we will submit it to DEP. Mm -hmm. And that today is at least a six month process. They get jammed up, they don't get to it right off, and they get close to their deadline and they start looking at it and say, we need this, we need this. And normally that gets pushed off a little bit, but hopefully we can get it through them in six months. We will think of the that time to revise plans for that. So is this going to be a PUD or just restrictive no, it's covenants? A, it's a standard subject. There are restrictive covenants, though. There are restrictive covenants, by all means. All right. There already are. And they'll be deeded covenants? That's correct. Okay. Yeah, those, those are already in place on okay. the existing four lots coming down after this. And I would assume those are going to be extended. You're good? Good. Okay, so I guess now we're going to be looking for the determination of application completeness. And I'll just make a quick note on the, on the um, right of way situation. I did contact our attorney, I think yesterday. He hasn't got back to us, but that's something that we will have by the public hearing. Yeah. Yeah. Make a motion to fund the application. Yeah, the time is complete. <laughs> all second. All right. All in favor? Okay. There we go. Now, a uh, site walk. Um, you guys haven't seen it yet. So, would you like to do a site walk and, and go through it? Okay. <laughs> so, then we'll schedule that for the next meeting. Yeah. We're not going to have it then. I think it is. Okay. And then five o'clock. Five o'clock. Of course, the neighbors are invited. Yep. When, when, when is this? June third. June third at five o'clock. <coughs> Everyone within two hundred feet will get up and notice in the mail. And then the public hearing will probably be scheduled for that day too. Yeah. Okay. All right, moving on. We have new business. Right. We do. Okay. Okay. Conditional use application, outdoor storage, 405 Portland Street, Ricker. I'll let James take it away. My colleagues, James Ricker, have requested a conditional use for an outdoor storage facility at 405 Portland Street. This lot is in the rural commercial industrial zone. There is an existing use, Ricker's culture more, and that will remain active. The storage facility will include 30 to 50 spaces, depending on the size of the vehicles or RVs, campers, boats, and similar items. An office is included in this application as an accessory to the storage facility. Um, we'll see that the sidewalk, I mean, yeah, the setback's 40 feet. The records say it's 40 feet. It looks closer than 40 feet, but. What setback is that now? From, the, from your front lot. From the, from the road? From the, so the front setback is from the front of your lot. Yeah. So we'll get in, we'll get in there. Okay. No problem. You know, that's all right. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. There's an existing concrete slab for the parking area and gravel for the parking area and for, for emergency access around it. Hours of operation and proposed to be the same as the mulch business. 
and every three additional employees. An entrance gate and fence has already been added uh, along the road. LED, is proposed, LED lighting is proposed for the project that will be facing away from the road and downward facing, night sky compliant. The sketch provided is a zoom in, zoomed in on the right side a lot with a proposal uh, 70 feet from the property line of lot 1A. It does look like that side of the lot is forested to meet the requirements of 7.5 and 7.8. 7.8.5, uh, it requires screening for off-street parking. It, it, so in a, it requires um, screening of parking facilities from public streets, but that can, be, and, it, and it says not to be less than six feet in height, but that can be modified or waived by the planning board. Um, and that can be a point of discussion for tonight. Um, so that's um, that's it. I'm I'm sure the board might have some questions on the site plan. I think at this time it's okay with the chair to have applicants come up and yeah, present what they have. Yeah. Great. Uh, basically, yeah. it. That's it. I mean, basically yeah. everything. That you gotta come up to the mic. Sorry. You gotta... Basically, everything that we're doing is everything's already been done. We're just repurposing the property. Okay. I mean, we only grab up a little bit of an area to meet the mulch bins, but everything else mm -hmm. is there. So all the, the gravel, the pat, the pot that we're going to do where the storage is, is already established. Mm -hmm. It's been established for over 20 years now. So, I mean, that's basically it. Nobody will be working on anything there. If they're just going to park them and leave them. And then obviously they'll be making appointments to pull them in and out. So... So James, you were talking about screening. What sort sort of screening in front of where these vehicles are going to be? It would be screening at the along here, along the street, along the street, yeah, right. between the street and the vehicles that are going to be yeah. parked there. Yeah. So you so you we need to screen it so they can't see it. Yeah. How come the other ones don't have to? The other facility down the street don't have to. Which ones? You have we have three other facilities that do outdoor storage as well down the road from us. Uh -huh. You got prime storage. You got the when you this leave, is a part for parking facility, huh? This is for par parking. Well, it's the same thing as what they're doing. It's just another. Uh, I agree. With, I think they all should be screened. But I mean, we can talk about. I mean, do you have a problem with throwing some landscaping? There, 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 there's going to be a, a six foot uh, fence fence going along the roadside as it gets past now. It'll, it'll be put up as soon as we get it. I mean, these are one of sort you don't you can't see them at all. Is that what you're talking about? Because I mean, we, with the other business, we kind of gotta advertise. Yeah. No, I mean, I think it's just the the parking area. It's, I mean, the the word is softened, I guess. So, yeah, I mean, it, it, you know, it's um, chain link fence. So you know, it's what most people use. I mean, is that, that kind of the screen or how how in depth? Yeah, to start, yeah. To start, yeah. Yeah, there'll, there'll be a fence. Yeah, there'll be a six foot fence across. Yeah. The whole I mean, it does, it does say that the this, this standard can be modified or waived by the planning board. I mean, this is something that can be put on hold until we do a site walk. And yeah, I would say that, right? Yeah, because yeah. if we're going to look at it, and if it has to do with your advertising of your business too, that's something to be considered. So, yeah, like we wouldn't, yeah, we would make you block off the entire. Yeah, I mean, that's, yeah. that's what I mean. The worst case would be we want to see a little, some reasonable lens. Landscaping, nothing too crazy. Yeah, I mean, it's already, I mean, we already got grass and everything yeah. all, all there that, that we have. I mean, the chimney fence might, might do it, but it's up to the board. Yeah. yeah, when we take a look at it, we should, we should figure it out then. Okay. And are there any abutters that have any issue with anything? So tonight would be application complete. complete. If once the applic an application is not complete, then we'll send the notices okay. for, for a public hearing. Okay. No. I have one question, it, more for protection to you. Is there going to be any type of security with what's said yeah, in there? Yeah, we're going to have cameras, and you know, we're going to have cameras on the, the office, and where we have the light proposed, we're going to have cameras on there right. too. Because, like you said, there's not going to be a fence all the way around, so somebody could actually come in. Yeah, no, they're going to be the cameras are going to be overlapping where we put them. So okay, we'll have that. That's more for your protection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, you're not having a gate or anything like that, Jamie. Any what? Here's a gate. Going to have a gate. No, we have a yeah, we, we a put gate up there. a new gate. Oh, okay. It's like a big slide gate, so it'll be locked. And then when you come down, I'll show you where we're going to run the fencing. 
and then where we where I stopped the fencing on one part of the property, I ran all Jersey barriers mm. so people can't drive in to try to get stuff up. Right. Mm -hmm. That's where so, I was going with the yeah. security type thing yes. too. So just yeah. to protect you with what you have said. Right. Exactly. Okay. Well, just to make the people that want to park there safe feel that it's more secure. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, all that will be. Okay. Okay. So I guess we're just going to vote on uh, determine the application completeness. I make a motion that we find the application complete. I'll second. Okay. All in favor? Okay. There we go. Now we'll just uh, schedule a site block and yeah we're gonna sell off for june 3rd so um, maybe the next one after that june 7th june 17th okay whatever works for you whatever will be it be in the evening i'm assuming yeah five, five. o'clock okay we usually do it five all right yeah that's fine that okay works. great perfect okay Thanks. thank you thank you so next is public comment anyone has a public comment they'd like to take? Hi, well, my name is Tom Blanchard. I uh, reside at 96 Old Pine Hill Road. So it's actually facing one or half on your lane. So I'm very interested in the new development. Um, concern is when we, uh, when Dick Demarius had Demarius development properties with Hadley Moore, the series properties when they were in development that back in 2008 when it was originally approved. We were the first, I bought the first piece of property there um, under the uh, faces of 19 homes being. In a, in, a, in a dead end cul de sac neighborhood. So, my house was the seed project that started the whole development. And, and, and it did pick up my, my neighbors. Um, they, they, their homes were built that subsequently, too. <clears throat> so, I'm really concerned about the traffic because um, it, I'm kind of disappointed <clears throat> because I, I feel a little bit of bait and switch. So, and I feel my neighbors, we all feel the same because this is not what we bought into or what we intended. So we understand the 19 homes, but the 54, that's that's a lot. That's that's a huge scope change. So we do hope you take that into consideration. And, and moreover, should the, uh, this development connect uh, half Lincoln Lane with what's other street? Norman Court. With uh, Norman Court, that would that really would be disappointing. That's that's our biggest fear. Uh, we all have families, and we don't want it to be a thoroughfare or a shortcut. So, so where is your home now? Uh, Ninety six Old Pine Hill Road. Okay. So the first home is you as you yeah, come yeah. in and have to lane on the right. Yeah. We're, so, not, we're not supposed to talk about yeah, if the applicant's like not this. here, but thank you. I think that's good. If you have other more concerns that pop up, send an email. That way it can be read into the record and it will be put on public record. Thank but you. if the applicant's not here, we're not. I understand. Not to uh, but the com there was a comment you made about uh, abutting notices of yep. 200 feet. Yep. Where is that 200 feet defined? It's 200 feet of the edge of, of both the Norman Court and the Halflinger lot. So that each, each edge of, of that. So does, of it, the, does it begin on Old uh, Point Hill Road? It would, it would be 200 feet from the, the any edge point of, the, of their lot, of the two lots that they're proposing to develop. Correct. But my understanding is that right now, half on the lane is still a private road that now it would, uh, when you purchase the original property, the rights from um, uh, the nearest estates that um, he still owns that right of the private right away. So do, does that include the 20 feet from that piece? Is that part of the project? Yeah, it include it, the, I think the right of way would be the kind of the start or okay. maybe the, and if it's 205 feet, you're probably still getting it. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Well, I, I will also like to say that I'm very pleased to hear, I heard someone mention about finally getting a sidewalk line, you know, from- uh, The uh, library. Yeah, that's, yeah. my wife used to work at the daycare facility. They used to bring the children to the library repeatedly, but I would always try to do, talk them out of it because I thought it was very dangerous, but it was very beneficial for the kids. And we got a library use it 
Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, and, and now we got, you know, if we're going to alert the community, the more residential property, I think it's more important to uh, connect everyone through sidewalks. Absolutely. So, mm -hmm. That's all I'd say. Well, that's the start you. of a good segment. Yeah. Okay, so moving on, I guess we're going to go to informational items. I just say June 3rd, you're yes. obviously welcome to come. Thank you. Um, June, um, I had something. I'm going to come back to me. Sure. For the site walk and public hearing. Okay, anyone else have any informational items? No, so then we're going to move for an adjournment. Move to adjourn. Okay, all in favor? There we go. Thank you. Good night. Good night.